is I had a client that said they had this AstroTurf outside, and their windows were so efficient, it was bouncing the sun off and burning their <laughs> AstroTurf. Hey guys, this is Matt Hoos with Sawhorse. I am with Mike Barsic, superstar. Now, I've heard you're a stand-up comedian um, sometimes. Not or you're just, you're just funny unintentionally. Uh, unintentionally, yeah. But yeah, you are the technical principal for South Face to basically make sure that everyone is in line. If you're developing these principles, everything, the building science lines up, so everything, and um, basically it just keeps, keeps everyone in order here. So I, I, I don't know about that, but, uh, but I, I do get the, the thrill of doing a lot of our technical education, and that's always fun. And uh, my understanding is that we're going to talk about windows. Yes, windows specifically. So I heard a rumor that uh -huh. if you replace your windows, and this is according to like all these these flyers out there, uh, you will cut your energy bills in half. Or, or these windows pay for themselves in two years and stuff like that, right? Uh, that is really not true. Got it. <laughs> um, and interestingly enough, so you have to look at windows kind of, uh, it's a different tact you take if you are building a new home versus retrofitting something in yeah, an yeah. existing thing. And um, generally, uh, in terms of weatherization projects that have a good return on the investment, you know, we kind of have a, a lettering scale, you know, A or very high priority, very fast payback, exactly. things like LED light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, windows are w way down on the list. They're usually like a D priority. Yeah, I do remember that. that. That was the Home Performance and, Energy Star. And, and, yeah, and it's, it's, not, yeah. it's not to say, Matt, that, that, that new windows aren't better. They definitely are. It's just that if you're solely looking at the energy payback, because it's very expensive to retrofit, mm -hmm. a lot of labor to retrofit windows, then um, it's, it's just not the highest priority thing you do. Got it. Now, if you wanna retrofit your windows because you don't like the aesthetics, or there's some other aspect about it that you really just wanna replace them, then go for it. And yes, your, your utility bills should go down as a result of that. Uh, the new windows that you replace today are pretty much in line with the ones that we're using in new construction, and they should certainly meet minimum code. Uh, the two big terms we care about on windows are what's called U-factor, which it. is kind of like the insulating term, and also solar heat gain coefficient, which is the sun gaining into the building uh, factor. One, the U-factor is kind of the dominant term in the wintertime. The solar heat gain is the dominant term in the summertime. We want both of those numbers to be low. And right. the code well, in numbers... Well, the south, we want them to be low. Yes. Because yeah. up north... Well, well we're in a mixed the, climate, yeah, yeah. so, you know... Uh, in a very cold climate, they just want really low U factor. Mm -hmm. they, they'll take all the sun they exactly. get. Exactly. But you know, and and then if you go way far south, it's it, it's much more about solar gain. So we're kind of a mixed climate, so everything matters. Um, you can go to Energy Star and look at their guide for windows to sort of see what, based on your climate zone what is the most important thing. But generally, um, if you just follow the most current codes, you're getting a pretty good window. The technologies today. You know, the old windows, like the ones I yeah. have in my 100-year-old house, are single-pane wood frame, and they have about uh, an R value of about 1, or yep. a U factor of about 1. And um, the solar heat gain is actually pretty high. It's probably 75 80%. Uh, when you go to two panes of glass, right away, you've um, helped your U factor. That's probably dropped to, you know about a half or an R2, yeah. just to kind of almost double the R value. And your solar heat gain drops a little bit to maybe 50, 60%. But today's technology, everybody replacing windows today, the feature you want is uh, double pane with low emissivity coating, or Got double it. pane low E. And that will reduce your, or that will improve your R value to about an R3, or a U factor of about 0.3. And your solar heat gain is probably coming in 25, 30%. So that's significantly less of the sun's energy that hits this window. You know, would you rather have 80% go into your house or only 25%? And yeah. that has a big, big difference on the on the cooling loads. And so, so the solar heat gain coefficient, you've got that low E coating in here. And basically the sun's energy is bouncing off of that. And the reason that I know it actually does work mm. is I had a client that said they had this AstroTurf outside and their windows are so efficient it was bouncing the sun off and burning their <laughs> AstroTurf. So there's, so, there's, there's well, some they, mythological stories about, yeah, I melted but, the siding on well, my neighbor's house. And but here's like the that, thing, but. like the, the, the AstroTurf <laughs> guy, he's like, you know what? I don't want you to burn the AstroTurf. So he's like, he recommended putting inefficient windows yeah. in to say, I'm like, no, that's not, that's, that's not the right, that's choice. not the right priority for, <laughs> for that. So that's a pretty extreme example. Uh, no. Um, and some, some are more, uh, kind of heat mirror reflective than others, but, but generally no low E windows are a clear proven window. Yeah. 
winner, I guess I should say, the, the, the challenge is just the labor to replace windows. So if you're looking on an existing home, um, we have an option now. It's kind of an intermediate step. Yeah. If, you're, if you don't hate your windows, but you want to make them better, um, you could add storm windows. And today, mm -hmm. you don't want to add clear, you want to add what's called low E storm windows, which is uh, almost, it's, it's very similar kind of coating. It's a slightly different type, but it, it really does help that existing single pane window perform much better. Now there's an aesthetic detail. Um, it's usually cheaper to put them on the outside, sure. but they don't look as good. Uh, but there are also options, and we see this a lot in historic buildings, with interior storm windows, Got it. which look really, really good. The outside aesthetic is kept historic. The, you really can't see the stuff inside. They're so hidden, but they work. So there are ways. Those are also more expensive, as you can imagine. If you're really on a budget, you can even do things like if you have an insect screen, you can replace the insect screen with what's called a sunshade or a sunscreen. It's just that it's the same material but it's a tighter weave, and it's really neat, Matt. If, if I am inside the house looking out, I can see really well. You can, you can see oh, out wow. that way. But if you're outside looking in, it actually looks pretty black. So it's kind of a, you know, it's got a little privacy feature to it as well. It's an aesthetic. Not everybody wants that, but it is an option, and it's, it's kind of affordable. So for retrofit, there's different options. Obviously, mm -hmm. shades. You've got screens. Um, you can replace the window if you absolutely have to. Um, well, let's talk about the design and installation. So first of all, with the design of it, not having a window is actually more efficient than having a window. Obviously, by yeah. code, for egress, you have to be able to get out of the house. You want some natural daylight coming in. But sometimes people put all the wrong kind of windows on the wrong or side of the house. way too many or things like that. Yeah, so be like, judicious with your glazing. That's a really good point because, you know, our typical window today is pretty good. It's an R3, but that's nowhere near as good as... The wall itself, yeah. which is you know, whoops, four times that number. Speaking even even a even a code built wall is better than a oh, high performance yeah, window. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the very very high performance windows are very expensive too. So um, yes, be judicious with your glass. You know, we always our name of our organization is South Face because we yeah. want to try to orient our glass to the south with a modest overhang if you can get away with it. It's also great to have north facing windows if you're in air conditioning climate, especially. You really want to minimize east and west mm -hmm. glass. And it's not to say you can't have it, but you want to kind of go smaller or if you can shift a window on a corner that's either north or west, pick the north, that kind of thing. So the location of the glass, I think, is important. I also wanted to mention frames. Um, yep. Today, we have some really nice choices. Um, most of the country has kind of gone away from metal frames. Uh, metal frames have good durability, but they also tend to be, you know, surfaces that, that condense yep. water and they vary, they're very, metals very conductive. So our big choices today are uh, probably the most common is, um, is vinyl. Uh, we also um, have wood and, and those have pros and cons. Wood is a, an organic material, low carbon footprint. Vinyl has some toxicity issues with its manufacturing, but vinyl windows today are much better than they used to be. They're much more stable. Um, a neat third alternative is extruded fiberglass. Yep. Um, and you'll see uh, that offers really all the benefits of each of those products without the pitfalls. Um, and, uh, you know, you can paint it if you want to, but you don't have to. Wood, you have to paint. Vinyl, you don't want to paint. So, you know, kind of choices like that. Uh, uh, but all of those tend to be much better insulating than our, let's say, a, a, you know, yeah, inexpensive and, metal window. And, and the fiberglass ones, I mean, our clients like those. Most people, they see the benefit of a pre-finish. It's like, I don't ever have to paint it. Yeah. But my yep. clients are like, you know what? I want the option to be able to paint it yep. later. I'm like, well, if, if we go with like the wood with the aluminum clad, again, yep. it's there it's, forever. It's there forever. Right? But you, you can't ever change the color on that. I so, think extruded fiberglass is a really neat option. And yeah. ironically, it's more efficient than the higher. It's, 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 it's lower, up, they're all fairly close. Yeah, in terms so it's a little. Of, it but performs a little bit better than they, the, they do, the other and ones. and uh, it's it's a good it's a good alternative option. So, you know, you've got the frame, you've got the gla the glazing itself, you've got the orientation issues, uh, and Somewhat, when you're designing, these are all things you want to try to keep into account. And again, just like we said, use windows judiciously. Get light into a exactly. space, but you know, there's a point where if you have the whole wall is glass, you know, the, the, the lower two feet isn't doing a whole lot of natural daylight for you. So, and let's talk about this as a source of air leakage. Cause most people think, you know, my windows are leaky Yeah. and I've done a lot, I've done hundreds of 
energy audits myself, run the blower door. And the thing I found out is it's not the window that's leaking as much as around the window. Yeah. Especially in these older houses, yeah. like, man, the trim's leaking. Why is that? Oh, because I didn't have any no sealants around it. So yeah. a good installation of a, even a okay window is more important than a bad installation of a good window. Uh, absolutely. Because because that's like the installers can make up a huge difference on the air leakage. And you're right that, you know, with the exception of really old, you know, way, way old single pane windows, or it's probably the window unit itself does not leak that much. Windows today are supposedly tested and, and they're relatively airtight. It is very much the rough opening yeah. that the window assembly gets put into. That's the place that we need to use. Um, historically, we would use like a backer rod material and then caulk it into place. Um, we discourage people from kind of it's called chinking fiberglass into that, like in the log home industry. That's just a filter. That's not. Yeah, uh, it's not really an air barrier. You could caulking us, but today, uh, generally, what we're going to use today is a special uh, spray foam that's actually made for windows yeah. and doors because it won't over expand. It's usually a blue can for what that's worth, but make sure it says four windows and doors. Very important detail. Other detail is to make sure that the the um, the moisture details from the outside are integrated properly. So at yep. the top of the window, we're going to have what we call head flashing mm -hmm. and and pan flashing. These are things so that um, if water gets behind the frame itself, it's always going to drain away to the outside. And those details are sometimes not understood on the job site. So well, very and also at the bottom, you, right. you, yeah. you have the nail fin that goes around. <clears throat> A lot of times, we'll do like we'll make sure as long as you have the air seal on the inside. Yep. What we do is like make sure we're taking care of the bulk water on the outside, but at the bottom, we'll leave that not taped or sealed, and that way if water does get that, in, it can that, drain out. That can be, yeah, that's the one, I mean, you're still sealing from the inside, exactly. but if water needs to drain, that's fine. But it, the other three sides, you really want to always think up. about everything is, is layered like a shingle, mm -hmm. so it all overlaps properly. If water gets behind the siding, which it can and it will, um, that the drainage plane, the surface of the, the water shedding surface could be um, house wrap or felt or, you know, foam board skin. Anything that's the shedding water surface, it's always going to divert the water out as opposed to behind and into the... So windows have kind of always been a potential weak joint because Absolutely. people don't pay attention to these no. details. So, well, yeah, you always want to go down and out. And like what I tell yep, my staff, and and like the win <laughs> into ins window installers, siding guys, like think like water. If you're water trying to get into this fortress, which is the house, like how would you get in? <laughs> and if you if you find a way in, then that, that place needs to either be flashed, yep. taped, sealed, something like that. So well, I appreciate going through all these Pleasure. things with, with the windows. And um, and you guys do have classes on building science oh, yes. talking about this. I know I've seen your famous mug and a lot of the the, 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 the artwork promoting the class. So tell us about some of the classes that you've taught. Well, one thing windows. in particular, is, and I'll just say is for, for new home construction is um, – we do have a series of a dozen building science webinars, and there's one that's called Designing a High-Performance Building. So it's okay. kind of the, the, quote, top 10 list of what you need to pay oh, attention yeah. to. And, uh, you know, it always starts off with the first two things are always pay attention to where the sun is, make sure your ducks are inside the envelope, and, th and then it goes from there. So um, paying attention to where the sun is is really about good solar orientation exactly. and, and, and good use of windows. Yeah, designing with the elements and understanding yep. like where you where you are, because a lot of people they see these cool pictures from California. It's like I want this door that's wide open all the time. I'm like, man, that works in San Diego. Doesn't work in Atlanta, it, but it, it looks cool. It works, you know, two months in Mar two weeks in March, and a week in October. That kind of true, thing. So, true. Know, just the, kidding. We we like operable windows. We want operable windows, uh, but you know, you got to use them again. Be judicious. Got it. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Matt.